I told you we're starting your week off with a bang because joining us now from the Impractical Jokers, Saw Volcano, who will be live in person in the living flesh at the theater at the Virgin Hotel here in Las Vegas. We gave out tickets all last week, and some tickets are still available at access.com. That's AXS.com. And as always, all guests are brought to us by BetQL. Bet smarter and beat the books. Download your BetQL app today or visit BetQL.com. So I'm certainly the most popular person in my group message today because I told me we were going to have uh, you on the show, and so many of my friends are, are huge fans. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, guys, come on. Thank you so much. I'm psyched to come there. And, uh, uh, and I think the Virgin Hotel is new, right? Yeah, it's redone. It's redone. I like to call it the theater just to make it a little bit more <laughs> exactly. fancy, but I'm sure you can nice. do that with, with your set that's upcoming again this Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, before we get too deep into the comedic weeds, though, we must know where your sports allegiances lie. I know you're from Staten Island. I'm a hockey person. Adrian, you're a little bit more football, basketball, but which, what sweaters are you pulling on? Because we got some judgment to pass. Okay, yeah, I have a I have a curveball in there, but some okay. So for baseball, I'm Yankees, right? I got to go Yankees. All That's the way. unfortunate. Yep. <laughs> Look, I'm born in '76. I grew up with the Yankees, you know. Uh, for football, though, there's my curveball. I'm Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, <laughs> Adrian okay. hates you already. I'm from Cleveland. We're <laughs> off to a good start, Sal. <laughs> oh no, Adrian, don't judge me. <laughs> Oh. Well, listen, I, yeah, I'm Pittsburgh. Uh, hockey, I'm the New York Islanders. Right on. Respectable. And, uh, and then basketball, I got to go Knicks. You know, I got to go Knicks. Well, first off, I kind of want to get your reaction. Heinz Field, no more, got a new name. But also, have you heard this news about the uh, Jets starting quarterback, Zach Wilson, and what he's been doing this offseason? I have not. Okay, so Zach Wilson's ex-girlfriend is dating his roommate, who used to be a wide receiver at BYU, someone okay. went on the girlfriend's page when she posted a picture of, of him and her new boyfriend and said, whoa, you're a homie hopper. And she said, well, actually, you should ask Zach because he was sleeping with his best friend's mother. Is that the behavior of a winning quarterback, in your opinion, Sal? Oh, my Lord. If that's true, that is that is a winning quarterback in my mind. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the Jets are finally going to turn around, Sal. Maybe they'll convince you to to get your uh, allegiance a little bit more localized once again. But uh, you're ringing that man's future. No, that's crazy. Oh my God, did she really out him? Is that real? No, that's that's real. Zach Wilson's mom has had to leave Twitter. There's a lot of milf jokes flying around the social meds. I'm sure you're too busy wow. to see all it. Man, that is wild. Yeah, it's it's definitely crazy. It's definitely uh, more of a narrative I would associate with our fair town here in Las Vegas. And, and Vegas means different <laughs> things when you're here for work versus play. And obviously you have your big show this Friday. What does a day look like for you when you're preparing to do a show like that versus uh, maybe one of your better Vegas adventure stories? Because whenever my friends visit, I say you don't do Vegas. Vegas does you. Oh, I get that. Yeah, I mean, so the, so the tour day is so boring, guys. Because it's like I'm in a different city every day. So I get in, I get to my hotel room, I eat lunch, take a nap, go over my jokes, take a shower. It's like nothing. Everyone's like, oh, you get to see the whole you know, world. Like I did 60-something cities this year. And they're like, you get to see everything. I'm like, I just see a, a hotel on the stage and, and that's it. you know. But I was in Vegas about a month ago for actual pleasure. I had the best three days. I, um, I, saw, I went to dinner every night and to a show every night. I went and saw Silk Sonic. Uh, Ooh. Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. That was absolutely terrific. Uh, I saw uh, this this uh, saloon. What's it called? The, um, the, the from the people that did that show, Absinthe. Abs- yep, the, yep. They do do another one at some, the lo- something saloon. I went and saw that. That was a really really funny show. People get loaded at that thing. <laughs> but for me, for me, Vegas is all about like I'm in the pool in a day, and then and, and then one of the the best dinner I could find. And a show. I'm still doing like I'm doing like adult Vegas now. Like my my I've been to Vegas maybe 30 times. The first 20 times were definitely like a different nightclub every night. But I am I'm past that now. But I used to do the whole like Vegas until like you know 6 a.m. thing. Yeah, those long yard daiquiris, man. They'll get you. Yo, Sal. Yeah, but you guys, you guys are there, right? So like you don't look at you don't like you have the real Vegas. It's like outside of the microcosm that is the strip, right? Or as as local Vegas people, you you stay away from the strip or do you still go there 
from restaurants and entertainment, or is that like just a thing that tourists do? I mean, I only really go down there when I have friends visit or when I have to cover the Knights games, and I just pretend like I'm a tourist for then for 24 <laughs> hours, but then I leave and get to right. sleep in my own bed. It's fantastic. Right, right, right. And also because of the pandemic, like it used to be free parking and yeah. everything, but everything surged. So like, unless you're going to a show or an anniversary dinner. Yeah, you're not hanging out there at all. And also, now right. I'm a dad, so I gotta. I'm at home with my PlayStation. Family friendly you know what I'm down there. Plenty of activities for you. <laughs> Yo, um, so oh, wow. congrats. Thank you, thank you. One question I wanted to ask you. Uh, first off, salute. You guys are in the middle of season nine. Uh, I know, uh, doing my research, you said you guys are going to start filming for season ten of the Impractical Jokers. Congratulations. A Netflix show would never be able to get to that point. Um, but with everything changing in terms of, there's content everywhere, whether it's social media or streaming services and everybody getting the show and getting to do their ideas, does it make the show more difficult? Or on the flip side, does it kind of open the door up more creatively to try things? Yeah, a good question. Um, I, you know, so I think it's the fact that we've been um, in this in this like arena of television and cable for, I, it's going on 11 years now. I think that since we planted our flag there so long ago, like we are one of a few shows that, and because they play us so much on the network, we're one of the few shows that has kind of like stood the test of time uh, as opposed to like the way people are viewing television now. They're like really binging it. It's mostly streamers. Like the, the landscape's totally changing. But I think because they play us so much and people still have DVR and stuff, like, uh, you know, we're able to do whatever we want. And, and, and we also get to be really creative because of that tenure at the network too. Like we didn't have as much creative freedom as we did you know, in the beginning, but since we're there now, it's like, we're kind of like old, you know, old employees that, you know what I mean? We kind of get to, if we went and did a project with someone else, I, I don't know how much of that we, we'd actually, how much of that freedom we'd actually have. We'd push for it though. for sure. You know? Yeah. And the jokers we trust, what are you going to say? We're not profitable for you. I would just green light every single thing. And you're right in terms of like creative control and making your way through this business. When I was still coaching hockey, I had this grand idea where we would create human sized uh, version of the hungry, hungry hippos game on the ice, like with bungee cords and helmets and pads along the boards. But the liability police got in the way. Do you have one of those ideas oh. that's not the safest, but maybe brilliant and you're hoping to try someday? Oh my God! We have first of all, I love Hungry Hungry Hippos. It was my favorite game as a kid. I spoke about them recently, and that is the most genius idea. That is, I, I, I would, as a fan, I, that would be so funny to see. We we have so many. That's every time we have an idea, the first thing that says they go insurance liability, mm -hmm. like, and we're like, oh, and then we have to have it's so funny. We'll go to bat for ideas, but it's so funny the conversations we actually like, the serious conversations. We actually have to have, like, we want to throw them out of the helicopter. We want to light them on fire. We want to do this. We want to do that. And they're always, even just like, oh, we want, you know, and it's always just like, yeah, you can't do that. And we're like, but sometimes we just do it anyway. But I don't know why, I don't know why I whispered that on my phone over the radio to you guys. Like, the insurance people, <laughs> they're always like, listening. Like the, like the wire was tapped by our own insurance company. I'm like, we still do it anyway. But, um, <laughs> They were, they were just talking about me jumping through a ring of fire um, like two days ago, and that's the latest thing that's going to insurance for liability right now. They got suits for that, right? I'm sure the Game of Thrones extras have a few to, to throw your way. It, it is funny. Exactly, right? It's funny because they pick and choose when something's too much. Like when we did our 200th episode special, we did it with Nitro Circus, which yes. is like full-on stuntmen with motorbikes. And we were in the bikes doing flips, all this stuff, riding in these monster trucks, like literally tumbling over. Two of us, three of us got injured, and it was fine then. <laughs> but you know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they put me in the in 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 the movie. They put me in a in a in a motel room alone with a tiger. So <laughs> they they really do pick and choose, like you know, like and then they'll tell me, ah, you can't, you know, you can't jump through a ring of fire. I'm like, safer than a tiger. Are we rock, paper, scissoring the decision on who needs to do this? And how did you end up in the room alone with the tiger? Some of the stunts that you've done throughout the show's history. So I, I ended up in the room because they had the idea when I wasn't there. And so it had to, like, it had to be a secret. <laughs> oh, man, that's the worst. Just, it, You're not dedicated I, I guess, enough. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's how the show goes. It's actually crazy. It's like it's the CIA, the office, because like everyone is – harboring and holding multiple secrets against everyone else at all times and you have to be careful not to slip and even the extended crew of like 40 50 people they're in on the secrets because they have to produce them so everybody's walking around like 
secret agents, and you can't tell anybody anything. I think the the uh, the tiger was also because I I actually am afraid of cats, and I think that's like the biggest cat. Oh. <laughs> that's cruel, almost. It, like when you realize what was happening, like how did you talk yourself down through that? Because when it's like an actual phobia, like there's certain steps that you can take, but at the end of the day, you got fight, flight, fawn, whatever, freeze. Oh my God! Yeah, first of all, a tiger. Is not it, 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 it transcends a fear of gas. It's not even <laughs> just a little. I will I will, I will be in a, I'll be locked in a room with a hundred cats for it. Well, maybe not, but before a tiger. But um, you know what? The way they did it, they they told me I was walking into the room for something else. And as soon as I walked in, they slammed the door shut, and they had already <laughs> took the handle off the inside. Oh my god! And they 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 bolted it shut, so I couldn't get out. And then I didn't know why, but I knew something was wrong. And then from the it was a small roadside motel, and from the bathroom I heard the lion, uh, the tiger, and I froze. And the tiger walked out. It was on a chain, but the the chain was tied to like the handle in the shaft. Like they could have ripped, <laughs> they could have ripped it. Right and if you if you see this scene in the movie, like I actually thought we, it wouldn't make the movie because I I I couldn't even perform. It wasn't funny to me. The first thing I the first thing I asked is. How did you get insurance to this? Yeah, you're staring and death then, in the face, literally. Literally, and I and I just thought the whole time that like I don't care what anyone thinks. Like the tiger bit Roy, right? So you want to talk about Vegas? Like that guy that that guy raised that tiger and he bit his freaking head off. So so I was just like at any moment like this could turn. So I just couldn't. I was frozen with fear. I didn't think it would be funny because I I couldn't even speak. And it turns out that that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it ends up being in, the, in those surprise moments. And as long as it's for the bit, that's what I was kind of saying last week. We're having such trouble saying your name because we just don't know how to phonetically read through some stuff sometimes. So you know what? We make mistakes. We make them into bits. And that's what truly makes uh, gold, at least in our industry. But in terms from your perspective, how has the comedy world changed in the last couple of years? What does it mean to us now? And what does it mean to you? Well, the comedy world that large like stand up. Yeah, it's funny. You know, it's funny. You could talk to two different people right now, and they'll give you two different answers. And you know, because in many ways it's both, right? In many ways, it's like there is more stand up comedy available than ever before in our lives by, I think, a hundredfold. Every streamer puts out. It's saturated now, you know, and it's just like so. And in some ways, that's great because you know, more people are seeing more comedians and a lot of comedians now are doing the DIY model and uploading their specials to YouTube and they're taking like, you know, their ownership in their own hands. That I love to see. Um, It is a little weird though, because like in the day when specials became a thing, they're called a special because they were supposed to be. And like only, you know, a few handfuls of comics that were like the greats got their specials and you had to like really work up to it to mean something. So there's two schools of thought on it. I think, you know, I, I'm happy with it. I mean, people might also say like comedy right now is under attack and, you know, it's, it's, it's divisive. It's stuff out. I think it's always been. I just think now we're, we spend so much of our lives online that it's just like it seems more prominent. But for me, I think like literally live comedy was always my favorite thing to go see. It's my favorite thing to do. So, you know, I think the more people that are doing comedy and the more options you have to go see live comedy, the better. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Sal Volcano joining us. You can catch him on stage this Friday, July 15th at 8 p.m. The theater inside of Virgin Hotel Las Vegas. Tickets still available at access.com. That's AXS.com. And sorry to bring it back to animals really quick, but I believe this is breaking news. I saw it on the Twitter account. Shark Week. You guys, the Impractical Jokers, are hosting the Shark Week Spectacular. How did that come about? How was that experience? Did you go in the water? How much money do you need to go under the water to get close to those sharks? (laughs) Um, Yeah, I definitely got some mortgage payments out of that one. Uh, (laughs) Well done. Good. They, They, um... You know, Discovery is just merged with Warner Media, and so now, like that happens in television, and so now we're in the same family. And uh, we were Shark Week fans. They came to us and just asked us out of the blue, um, and I said no at first because I don't want to go swim with sharks, you know. But um, but we watched some of the older things, and we we started to think about ideas that we could do, and they gave us full creative control. And then it started to be like cool. And then we found out we were just filming a week a week in the Bahamas. So oh, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna get paid. I'm gonna go to the Bahamas for a week. I could do whatever I want. They were like, Yeah. 
And so I was like, okay, let's do it. So I didn't, I didn't, I stayed in a cage in the ocean, but like Q went freeform swimming with them. Um, I, I swam, I swam with them in a lagoon, but they were nurse sharks. So like the, I was told that, um, that they don't bite. They only suck. Yeah. They got vacuum mouths. <laughs> so, yeah. Vacuum mouths. And then when I was, I went in with them, I'm like, all right, fine. I was trembling. It's all on camera. And then someone told me like, that was in there with me, the worker. I'm like, they don't bite. And he goes, who told you that? And I was like, they said they don't bite. He goes, no, they can bite if they want to bite. And I was like, but I heard they just suck. He's like, no, they can bite if they want to bite, but they'll probably just suck. He goes, but you don't want to do that either because it'll suck your entire arm off. So I was like, so this isn't safe at all. Casual. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like, like, what's the insurance policy on that? That's wild to me. One of my bucket list items is to go cage diving off of a uh, seal island, but it seems like some of your buddies would be like, oh, let's try to flip them upside down and see if we can put them in that trance. Oh, yeah. They dumped, a bu- they dumped blood and guts and chum on top of me, didn't <laughs> tell me, while I was in the cage, and the sharks swarmed the cage. Terrifying. It was, it was, it was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. And then I went to, like, raise myself up from the bottom of the cage to the top, and I didn't realize that a section of the cage was basically, like, a window, but a cage, and the whole cage opened. Oh, no. While I was down there, a shark was, like, five feet away, and I slammed it shut again. And I was, like, a a moment away from a shark being in the cage with me. So, yeah. So that's how that went. So everyone tune into that. I think it's it's on July 26th, I think. And you're still alive, too. Yeah, I mean, that. thrashing in a, in a chum tornado underwater in a cage, it pales in comparison, at least when you're doing stand-up, right, at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, now it's at the point where tigers, sharks, I'm like Bear Grylls now. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule and, and for doing a show here for us in our community. Again, live Friday night at 8 p.m. at the Theater at Virgin Hotels Las Vegas. You can get your tickets right now at AXS.com. Thanks again, Sal. Thank you guys so much. Of course, thank you. And of course, all guests are brought to us by BetQL. Bet smarter and beat the books. Download your BetQL app today or visit BetQL.com. Lindsay, is it time to talk some basketball? I think it is. We got another MVP in our midst. K Plum dropping dimes.